Good morning. morning. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. This can be found on page 115 in the New Testament portion of your Pew Bible. Reading from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the, Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter. Yeah, it is a happy Easter, isn't it? Easter isn't just a day. Easter is a season that lasts until Pentecost. Did you ever think that the Easter season is a season that unites us with our Jewish brothers and sisters? I'll tell you why I think so. The history of Israel really begins with the Exodus when God brought Israel out of Egypt with a strong hand and a mighty arm. He brought them to Sinai and made a covenant with them there. He would be their God. They would be his people. And then he gave them an annual feast, a festival to remember all of that, the Passover. And so at Sinai, Israel became a Passover people. Well, Christians are also a Passover people. You know, in most European languages, uh, what we call Easter is named with a, a word that is derived from the Greek word for Passover, that is Pascha. We call it Easter. And so instead of saying we're a Passover people, let's say we're an Easter people. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at what happened when Jesus appeared to his disciples the first time on that first Easter day. There they were in a locked room, hiding, afraid, wondering what was going to happen next after their leader had been crucified. And suddenly, in spite of the locked door, Jesus was standing there in the midst of them, and he said to them, peace be with you. Now, that was a common uh, greeting, but but Jesus made it very uncommon. 
He had said before his death, he had said, peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Oh, but so much had happened since he said that. In Gethsemane, the disciples had all fled into the darkness, only concerned to save their own skin. And they all knew in their hearts that their, their desert, desertion uh, had made Jesus suffering even worse. So they were all feeling guilty. And you know, there's no peace when you're feeling guilty, is there? I mean, I think we all can experience that. Haven't you ever remember, can you remember a time when you really messed up a relationship and nothing was right until you apologized and were forgiven. Well, these words of Jesus, peace be with you, were words of forgiveness. He was assuring the disciples that in spite of everything that had happened, they were still his people. Then he said to them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Now that's quite a statement. God had sent Jesus into the world as his missionary, his representative. And now Jesus was sending his disciples into the world as his representatives. Jesus had come declaring that the kingdom of God is at hand. He sent his disciples out into the world to tell everyone that the kingdom of God was present in Jesus. Jesus had come to call people to repent and believe. He sent them out to declare God's forgiveness and God's fellowship to everyone who would repent and believe in Jesus. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now that breathe on them is important. In both the language that Jesus used and in the Greek in which the New Testament is written, there's one word which means both wind and breath and spirit. And that takes us back to the creation story. When God had formed a human being out of the dust of the earth, and then we're told God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. You and I are human you and I are people. You and I have living souls because of the breath of God. And now Jesus was forming a new people, a people who would be empowered as he had been empowered. Jesus received the Holy Spirit at his baptism. And everything he did in his ministry, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he had told his disciples, greater things than I have done, you will do. How are they going to do that? There's only one way, and that is that Jesus gave them the same Holy Spirit who empowered him. And so that's what it means to be an Easter people. It means to have the peace that passes understanding, peace with God peace within ourselves, peace with others. It means to be commissioned to be a missional people, to be a missional church composed of missional people. And it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that by that power we are able to carry out the commission that, the, that Jesus gives. Now those words that Jesus spoke to the disciples, were not just to them. Those are words that were also spoken to us. We need to get that. Those words that Jesus spoke were spoken to you and to me just as much as to Peter and Andrew and James and John. Those words are just as meaningful, just as powerful today as they were then. We are and Easter people. Maybe you don't feel like an Easter person. 
Maybe you feel as if when that peace and power were passed out, you were behind the door or something. Well, if so, the story of Thomas is just for you. On that first Sunday, that Easter Sunday, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, Thomas wasn't there. Why? We don't know. I don't want to be hard on him. I think that Thomas was probably filled with grief and guilt and was maybe the type of person who has to handle grief and guilt by himself. Whatever the reason, Thomas wasn't there. He didn't see Jesus. He didn't hear Jesus. He didn't touch Jesus. But he heard about it. Oh, did he ever hear about it. Thomas, you should have been here. Jesus appeared to us, and he heard it not once, but over and over and over again because every one of his friends had to tell him the story. And even though they all told the same story, Thomas's response was, what have you guys been drinking? I won't believe that until I touch the wounds in his hand. Well, a week later, they were gathered together, same locked door, same upper room. And again, Jesus appears. And again, he says, peace be with you. And then he turns directly to Thomas and says, Thomas, come here. Put your hands in my wounds. I want you to believe. And Thomas didn't have to touch Jesus. His, his response was immediate, my Lord and my God. Now, what's your reaction to that? Are you thinking, well, if I saw Jesus, I'd believe too. But well, we can't. We can't, we, we can't break those barriers of, of time and space that, that separate us from that event. That's why Jesus said to Thomas, blessed are those who do not see but believe. But Jesus didn't leave us without something to rest on. We can't see Jesus, but we can touch him. We can't see Jesus, but we can taste him. Jesus told his disciples, this is my body, which is broken for you. He said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. Jesus comes to us in all of his grace in the Lord's Supper. And it's that Lord's Supper which makes us an Easter people. And it is as an Easter people that we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so in a few moments we will come to the table of the Lord. And as you come forward, Receive the bread, dip it into the cup, put it into your mouth, and return slowly to your seat. I hope you will hear the voice of Jesus saying, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. You receive the Holy Spirit. And may our response be, Yes, Lord, thank you. Where you lead me, I will follow. Amen. God's grace comes to us in many ways, including through the Lord's Supper. And one of the ways in which we're able to Give thanks for all that God has done for us is through the gifts that we return to him, which he has first given us. The offering will now be received.